Ladies and gentlemen, this is Game It's Come video. Let us discuss AMD's Kavari architecture in regards to two extra memory controllers as well as GDDR5 support, which are missing in the full release. Now, I've done an article of this, you can check it out if you want, which does have images and links to the relevant uh, white papers and notes and references that I discuss in this. Um, it's fairly short, but let's just jump in. So AMD have recently uh, released a developer's guide for the BIOS and kernels of Kavari. And they make several mentions of GDDR5 support as well as references to four DRAM controllers. Uh, just for reference, those are known as DCT0, and they go all the way down to DCT3, so 0 to 3, which obviously gives you four total. But in the full version, or should I say the current versions of Kavari, um, this isn't the case. Indeed, as you'll be able to see in the article's uh, shots, it says in the links, it states that GDDR5 memory is not supported in Kavari, but certain models and certain stages of the design, it definitely seemed that AMD were considering it. In addition to that, as I mentioned, those two additional memory controllers would have given the product significantly more memory bandwidth if it was using DDR3. So I know what you're thinking to yourself, well, why does that matter so much? Well, what this is basically illustrating is that, uh, because right now, if you've looked at the benchmarks for AMD's Kavari architecture, as far as we can tell, it really does seem to be memory bandwidth constrained. And so even if you're using really, really, really fast memory, like 2133 megahertz, for example, you're still running into memory bandwidth issues because of two reasons. One, obviously, DDR3 memory just is nowhere near as fast as GDDR5. And for two, um, you're only using two of the memory controllers rather than the four. So obviously your bus width is significantly reduced. Therefore, the benchmarks are pointing out that um, even with the 512 shaders that currently Kavari is using, it appears that we're getting very memory, uh, memory bandwidth limited uh, situations. And obviously with AMD wanting to uh, become more GP GPU intensive, in other words, start leveraging that, or as they uh, prefer to call it, fusion. This is definitely going to be something they're going to need to work on. Now, fusion, of course, utilizes a unified memory address. In other words, the GPU and the CPU are both seeing exactly the same um, section of memory. And this is very similar to, say, the PS4 or the Xbox One. The difference between the PS4 and the Xbox One is memory bandwidth. Now, if we were to look at a typical PC scenario, uh, compute can be done using PCIe, uh, to a degree anyway. There are some issues with the unified bandwidth, uh, with unified memory in that it has to copy uh, data over, which could be a bit of a problem, but generally speaking, a GPU, you know, it puts all the textures into the local memory of the graphics card, and there you go. So for general purpose graphics solutions, you're not running into memory bandwidth issues. The problem is, obviously, with DDR3 feeding not only the CPU part of this uh, APU, but also the GPU, it's just not providing enough memory bandwidth. And so it's possible in the future for AMD, we're going to be seeing one of a couple of different options. One, they could take the Intel um, Haswell type of approach, which is using EDRAM or even the Xbox One's option as well, which of course is using 32 megabytes of ES RAM. So in other words, it could be on die or it could be daughter. It's it's really dependent. Um, another option, of course, is in the future, they could go with GDDR5. It could be a, a thing in the future. It's going to be very difficult for us as consumers, however, to upgrade that. But it could be good for Steam Machine type of systems. Um, but obviously, right now, it's still really up in the air. Um, and AMD could definitely change things around for either Kavari or the successor. Uh, personally, 
I'm hoping that this is going to be a option for the future, an option for the future that could definitely be very interesting, specifically involving Crossfire, which obviously would mean that you could then team up your card with uh, a dedicated card with this, and so you'd be able to drastically increase the computing potential of your rig, as well as having a pretty damn good gaming system. And as I mentioned earlier, it'd be really good for Steam uh, Machine type of scenarios, simply because you would AMD would easily be able to put together a rig for pretty cheap. I mean, the APU uh, of the PS4, for example, I believe cost around $100 from memory. So it's pretty cheap, you know. They could put together a type of um, package and it could certainly be very competitive for gaming. I mean, if you would look at the Xbox One's uh, compute units, um, it has 64 shaders per 12 of the com uh, compute units, per one compute unit, and there's 12 total. So obviously that's how you get the 768. And that's not very difficult to do. We're not really far behind that now with Kavari, and certainly they could put more on. I have a feeling the primary reason they haven't um, is simply because of memory bandwidth. But that's not that difficult to solve as I mentioned either embedded memory or the alternative option would be as I said just simply switching to DDR4 or possibly GDDR5 anyway a uh, bit of a quickie hopefully you've enjoyed it I'll see you soon take care bye for now